What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing the top racing games of all time. Let's get right into this. Okay, so for me, up first is Need for Speed 2015. This is an amazing Need for Speed game, I feel. There is a lot of customization options you can do for your vehicle, which is great because I'm the type of person that loves to customize my vehicles. And not only that, but in the game, you can start out with your starter vehicle, the vehicle you pick at the beginning of the game, and you can use that through the entire great game. You can upgrade it, you can add parts, you can make it super fast, and you can finish the story mode and all of the races with that vehicle if you so wish. Now, I always try to do this in Need for Speed games, but along the way, I always buy more vehicles and always customize more vehicles because I'm a car guy. I love having more vehicles at my disposal if I want but I always try to race with the game, with the vehicle that I got at the beginning of the game. That's just something I always try to do. And Need for Speed 2015, it gives you that option. They do have quite a few different cars in the game. The racing is awesome. They brought back drag racing, drifting, normal races. So I thought that was awesome. So all in all, it is a great game and I loved it. Next up is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix. Basically, that's like saying the complete version of Midnight Club 3. Uh, Minute Club 3, it has a lot more customization options than any other racing game. For example, Need for Speed, it has way more customization options than that. You can go and customize the paint job a lot better. A lot more parts. They have a lot more parts, for example, under uh, front bumper, rear bumper, spoilers, scoops, side skirts. So much more that you can make something that looks incredible and make something that looks, to you at least, authentic and original and something that a friend might not make something very similar to it because there's so many options you can have for different parts for the vehicles. Um, you can change them to the point that it looks like a completely different vehicle than what it actually is. Dub Edition, whenever that part came out, that basically Dub has its own, it's a real life company and they make custom cars. Um, basically in the game, there is certain tournaments where you can win a Dub Edition vehicle that is customized through Dub Edition. Now you cannot change the vehicle yourself, but you can win it and use it and it looks usually really sick. Um, I think they had a Bel Air, a Lamborghini, um, I can't remember some of the other vehicles that were Dub Edition for tournaments, but you can do that. And Dub Edition also included a lot more Dub parts, so whenever you're customizing your vehicle, there's a lot more Dub parts within there that you can add to your vehicle whenever you purchase it and start to customize it. And Remix was, like I said, basically saying it's the complete version to new games. Uh, the Remix version basically included a lot more um, vehicles in the game, a lot more customization options, a lot more things you can do. One thing that I loved about Midnight Club games is it included a lot more trucks in the game. So there was the Silverado and trucks like that, which I thought was great because I love racing with trucks. It also had Pink Slip Racing, which... I always try to get more and more vehicles and purchase vehicles and customize vehicles. So if I race for pink slips, if I end up losing my ride, that's okay because I have a ton of more rides. But I always try to race for pink slips. If I win, I'd always try to sell that vehicle and usually it gets pretty good bank. On top of that, Minute Club includes, included bike racing, which I thought was a huge aspect and I thought that was incredible that they included that. So Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix is one of my favorite racing games of all time, if not my favorite racing game of all time. So I definitely enjoyed this game. Next up is Gran Turismo Sport, which I played on the PS4. I got it at one point when it was a free PS Plus game and it's a lot of fun. It's closed track racing, which normally I do not like in racing games, but I gave it a try. It doesn't take long to pick up. You can go and select and purchase different vehicles and there is the daily award to win vehicles. Basically, you have to drive 50 kilometers a day, which honestly isn't that much. It's like two, three races max usually. And then you get to spin and try to win a good vehicle. Some of the vehicles you can win every day are like $400,000 vehicles, which I've won a few. The race classes are awesome. Going into uh, career mode, it's like the campaign. Um, you can go and select different races and different races have different vehicles you need. So rear wheel vehicles, specific vehicles, mid engine vehicles. So I felt like that was a huge aspect to it. And it's a lot of fun. I absolutely love the game. Next up is project cars, which I recently purchased back a couple months ago. And I think I only paid $6 for it. Again, it's closed circuit racing, but it's a little bit differently campaign. You basically have to sign a contract to a specific um, racing tier and that 
is basically tells you what kind of cars you'll race. There is the uh, go-kart racing, which I felt, felt was a lot of fun. The mechanics of the game to pick up, it's not hard. It's an easy racing game, which I felt was incredible. The fact that you can actually pick it up really fast. The racing game itself was through the roof. I had a lot of fun with it, but it does lack in customization. You can't customize your cars. You can only go and change the paint. That's the same with Gran Turismo Sport. You can't customize your cars. You can just go and change the paint. But I still felt those two racing games were a lot of fun. That's why I wanted to include them on this list. And last up is the most recent Need for Speed game, which is Need for Speed Heat. They actually brought back a lot of elements that the previous game, which was Need for Speed Payback, lacked. And that is including things like customization options, the police presence, how you can do certain races, and the fact that you can start off with one car and finish the whole game with that one car if you so wish. I believe you can go and change the aspects and you don't need to go and purchase a different vehicle per race class. So for drifting or off-road, you can use the same vehicle, I believe. But honestly, when it comes to off-road, I always try to get a different vehicle like a truck or something that can handle off-road a little bit better. But drifting in normal races, I do like to use the same vehicle, which is my starter, which I believe is a Nissan 180. Um, that's just what I chose because the options for the starter vehicles are a... 65 Mustang, which I don't like starting off with. That's more of a classic vehicle, and I feel like you have to earn the right to have that. So I didn't want to choose that. The other one is an 80s BMW, which is awesome, but I didn't like that year. And the other one was a drift car, a Japanese Nissan 180, which I decided to choose that. And I'll upgrade it in the future and customize it. The customization options are insane, but you have to earn uh, rep points. So that's racing at night to earn rep points. To be able to unlock more customization options, you can do engine swap, which was awesome. I'm glad they added that, where you can actually go and change the engine. You can go and add and change different parts for the vehicle instead of buying those stupid um, cards for payback, where you hope to get something better. You actually have control of what parts go into your vehicle, which was awesome. So all in all, Need for Speed Heat is awesome. It has the day racing, which is where you earn money, which is legal races. And then it has night racing, which earns RP, which helps you unlock uh, the ability for certain vehicles and certain parts. So without racing at night, you can race during the day and earn money, but you still need to race at night to earn RP to unlock the stuff to be able to spend your money. Racing at night is illegal races where the police will try to take you down. And if they take you down, you lose a huge chunk of money, but you gain a lot of XP or RP. Um, so I think everything about the game is awesome. I'm a huge fan. Whenever it comes to Need for Speed, it goes Need for Speed Payback. Whenever it goes for Need for Speed, it goes Need for Speed 2015. Whenever it came out, it was awesome. And then Need for Speed Payback is the one that came out after 2015. And honestly, I felt like it was lacking. It just was not that great of a game. And Need for Speed Heat, having it in Miami, is awesome. Awesome. I absolutely love the game. I think it's a great game. And if you have yet to play Need for Speed Heat, I'd definitely recommend it because it's way better than Need for Speed Payback ever was. So these are the top racing games of all time. And I only wanted to list the games that I have played for this video. But comment down below what is your favorite racing game of all time. When it comes to me, as I've mentioned before, I am a car guy. I love racing games. I love to customize my cars in the games, which is why I love Need for Speed now. But I really wish they made another Midnight Club game. But something tells me that Rockstar is not going to do that. But Need for Speed Heat definitely is one of my favorite games right now. And it's definitely one that I'm playing the most. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave this here. Please take care. Peace.